Hi, good morning everybody. Um, second time around, I hope this works. Um, the last video just, Facebook stopped working. I don't know what happened there. So I was talking about sleep and um, so I'll just introduce myself again. I'm Deborah Byrne from Deborah Byrne Psychology Services, uh, known as DB Psychology across social media. Um, today's talk is going to be about sleep. It's going to be very, as quick as I can make it. Um, as I was saying on the other live video that um, about 60% of the population in Ireland suffer from sleep problems. Um, we have a big concern around driver fatigue as we know that about one in five deaths are actually caused by um, driver fatigue, actually caused by uh, sleep problems. So that is of course a huge concern and it should be a huge concern. Um, now, in terms of um, you know, they can be very varied and I have given some, you know, some ideas of why they can happen in the blog post. Um, and I've also listed out the sim some of the symptoms. Now, as I was saying, with the symptoms, first off, pain and if you suspect sleep apnea, I would go straight away to see your doctor. Um, don't have um, don't don't wait. Don't wait to, to try any of the things I'm going to talk about today. If you're already in a lot of pain, please go and see your GP immediately. Um, and, you know, if this is why you can't sleep, you need to get the pain management sorted out. You need to get to the root cause of why you're in so much pain. Um, if you already know why you're in pain um, and you're seeing your GP and it's been a long time, I would and you have never been to the pain management clinic in Dublin, please maybe um, ask your GP that you could go and see the you know, you could go see that team. They're very good at what they do. Um, the same thing for sleep apnea. If you suspect it's sleep apnea, go speak to your GP. They will refer you on to um, uh, the, the clinic in Dublin. There is a clinic in Dublin that I know of. I'm sure there's other ones around the country. Um, now. Sleep, as I said, huge problems. The symptoms um, that you get with regards to sleep, um, they can be mental and physical. So if you are suffering from um, high blood pressure, increased heart rate, um, uh, you know, you stress, you're going to be getting more angry, you're going to be getting a whole load of things. And I've listed them out. There's some really, um, uh, you know, physical symptoms that we can get from lack always mention to your GP that if you go in with a physical symptom oh by the way I'm getting a lot of sleep as well so you know do mention that because it can one can trigger the other or it can be reverse so think about that now in saying all that about the symptoms check out the blog um www.deborahpharmacologyservices.com what I want to talk about today is some ways in which it, you can help yourself the obvious one, and I state that in the blog, you know, it's very obvious. Cut back coffee, uh, particularly if you're a coffee drinker. Um, I would try drinking coffee by, you know, early afternoon, by lunchtime. Um, I know some of you are going to be going, no way, not way, not happening, not happening. Um, I have one of those coffee ones too, and not happening. But guys, really, if you're having sleep problems, it would be a small sacrifice to get your sleep, you know, sorted. Um, again, alcohol, we think of alcohol, that, that'll put us to sleep at night. Yes, it does. But once you've had that a short sleep, it will then wake you up. So, um, you know, you have to think about that. Um, you know, am I drinking too much maybe before bed? Uh, you know, I fall asleep as a result and then I'm a wide awake. Um, it could be because of the alcohol, because of whatever you're drinking before bed. So, Again, try and cut it out again. Smoking as well as is, you know, I would say to you, um, get help if you need to quit smoking. Um, the other thing is now the usual suspects, your diet, your exercise, um, you know, they have to be healthy. Um, you also need to create um, stress reduction. So if you're very stressed, um, I would look at, check out my blog. I give loads of tips on how to reduce your stress. I give loads of tips on... Um, you know, there's another blog there on time management and I know it's for women, but, you know, it's for guys. Well, check it out. You need to balance that time management and reducing your stress. Um, the other thing I would say to you is now meditation. When I have somebody come in to me, I always, always tackle meditation with them. It's a form, you know, I want to get them relaxing as much as possible. And I will teach them uh, meditation techniques. It doesn't matter. Are you 
usually have to use mindfulness myself. I have found mindfulness brilliant for to help my own sleep issues that I had a number of years ago. Um, and it really did. Um, so, but mindfulness isn't for everybody. Um, so any, uh, any meditation at all that you can do um, will help your sleep. It actually does help uh, improve your sleep. Now, in saying that, let's get down to some practical tips that you can actually do today. Um, your bedroom. Is it decluttered? Because, you know, walking into a, uh, in at the end of the day, you're absolutely, you're tired, you're, ex you know, you're exhausted, you want to get to sleep and you look at this messy room, your brain is going to go, oh God, oh, not conducive. It's not conducive, it really isn't. It sends a signal to your brain that, okay, this is not a nice room to sleep in. So you want to make sure that, you know, you're decluttered. So maybe take time at the weekend to just declutter your bedroom. You know, have a laundry basket, um, you know, change the bed sheets. Is it a nice place to sleep? Okay, next practical thing you can do. No television, no technology, no work in the bedroom. Bedroom is for sleeping and for sex and that's it. Uh, get rid of the television out of the bedroom, okay? Um, get rid of the the phone, don't bring your phone to bed with you. Do not ever bring your phone to bed. Certainly do not have any technology, other technology in the room and no work. You know, have a designated spot where you do your work, whether it's the dining room table, the kitchen room table, and then you tidy it away and you put it on, you know, wherever you put it and leave it there. And the same with the phone, have a designated area in the house and kids are the same. If you've got children, get the phones, everybody leaves their phones there and be, you know, be, be the adult and show the kids, this is where I'm going to put my phone at night. I don't bring it to bed. You're not bringing it to bed. Um, next you is, um, think about journaling. Okay. So, um, you want to get your body to relax. You want to start getting to relax. So in order to, to, you know, kind of say, tell your brain, to decompress it's okay to and do a journal where we just get all those emotions out um, paper, it's, brain. it's okay to do doing brain as we like to call it it's okay to Tell them doing things that you didn't have. Um, the next thing I suggest that you do would be to pick up a book and read it maybe. Um, and um, when I say a book, I want, you know, you want something, don't pick up something too intense. Do not, not pick up something that's work related. Do not pick up something that's, you know, going to stimulate the brain. So no crime, no, not something that's going to really get you going. Look for something that's, you know, a book as we call them, easy reads that you can put down and it doesn't matter if it's a month later when you go back to read it, you'll still be able to pick up where you left off. It's a very easy, relaxing read, you know, totally relaxing. It's a good way. Now, just like kids, we need a sleep schedule. Okay, so get up at the same time and go to bed at the same time. No matter whether you're tired or not, try and get up at the same time every morning. Even at the weekends, we know that people who are burning the candle at both ends, um, particularly uh, through work, will try and catch up on their sleep at the weekends. It doesn't work. Okay, it's not going to work. We know that it doesn't work. In fact, getting 10 plus hours is going to be as detrimental to your mental and physical health as getting six and less hours in terms of sleep. So it's just not going to work. Um, try and keep to the same routine that you have at the weekend, at the at you know, during the week, you keep that routine at the weekend. Just like kids, we need that that's kind of consistency in our sleep sh in our sleep schedule. And um, the other thing is, just like kids, we need a bedtime routine. So as I said, you know, the journaling is very important. Uh, turning off all social media, turning off our phones, all that, all the television. About an hour before you plan on going to sleep to do all that. Um, you know, if you if you need to take a relaxing bath, if you need to think about it in terms of, you know, what would be soothing to you, what would be relaxing to you, um, maybe a little bit of meditation if that's what you need at that 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 time of night. Um, 
So think about bed, a bedtime routine that you could just have. It could be the case that you have, you know, you, you wrap yourself, you have a shower or you have that bath and you wrap yourself up in a lovely fluffy, you know, uh, uh, you know, towel and, you know, you just start to relax and, uh, you know, turn off the main lights and you only have a little side light on and reduce the, the uh, you know, reduce the, the level of the wattage and things like that, you know, turn down dimmers and things like that. And, you know, soothing candles, the scent might be soothing. So think about that in terms of what, how can I very simply create a bedtime routine for me? Um, and I, you know, have a look at kids' bedtime. Sometimes they don't, we don't mention and we don't talk about having an adult bedtime routine. Um, but I'm sure there are lots of places out there that have them. Um, I've done some blogs on uh, you know, uh, helping kids uh, with, with routines and things like that and with schedules. So have a look at those and maybe you'll get some hints and tips for yourself. So that's it for this morning. Um, I know I promised people I would re-record the men's mental health, which I'm going to do after this one. We're having awful trouble with Facebook keeps shutting down and, you know, uh, the internet as usual in rural Ireland isn't great. So I will leave it there. Um, if you want more information, do check out the blog www.debrabarnpsychologyservices.com backslash blog and you'll see it. It's sleep um, and it's about 15 tips on how to improve your sleep this week. Um, so I will see you all next week and thank you all for listening this morning. Goodbye.